Hey everybody, welcome to a new video. In this one we are going to do something new, something that I've never done before and I think it could be interesting. So basically, we have here the Nature of Code book from Daniel Schiffman, the infamous Nature of Code book, which is uh, super cool. And we are going basically to get some code from this book and translate it into Max uh, live. So basically we are on chapter 6.10, complex system. So, uh, yeah, so this is about creating, uh, we will create, at the end of this video, we will have uh, a flocking algorithm system. So we will have some voids, which is uh, kind of birds, and they will follow some uh, flocking rules. So these rules are enunciated here in this uh, Nature of Code book, and we will just take them and translate them into Max code. Uh, using gen, so into gen code actually. So yeah, we will start from here, complex system, and then we'll go on with flocking. And we, I will surely not read uh, the book aloud. I will just skip to the important parts, but I suggest you to to read it in in its entirety because it's a wonderful book. Probably a lot of you already did, and you can actually get it uh, on a donation basis. So it's it's amazing. Um, okay, so let's actually start. Let's actually start with our complex system translation. The first thing we need is a cheat world because we are going to do this in 3D. Uh, we can actually choose if to make it in 2D or 3D, but we will have our code ready uh, to work also for three dimensions. So, nature of code, I would just call it uh, NOC. Then FSAA, and then uh, the sides of the window. So, uh, actually, window position first, then size, and uh, I don't know, floating for sure. Erase color also, let's erase something kind of gray. I will actually ena enable already the, the word. Uh, so, that's it. Uh, maybe also let's create a camera, GGL camera. Knock. Uh, look at the center, uh, lock look, and I don't know if this is really important, but um, yeah, maybe later when we want to move around, uh, when we have it in three dimensions, we will maybe want to move around our world, so let's create a gtanim drive uh, with UI list and set to one, let's maybe also make the speed greater, I don't know, just make it up to two, connect it to the camera, and create the message anim underscore reset to reset the position of the camera. So this should be it. Let's create a toggle if you want to turn our world out. Okay, so that's it. All right, then what we need is basically um, this will look a lot like a particle system because we we basically need to create. Uh, to store the location of these objects, these bytes, and the velocity of them from frame to frame. So we will create a set of matrices, g.matrix for the location, let's actually call it position 3, float 32, and then let's say how many bytes do we want. Let's say that we want 700, and I will also set 1 for the second dimension, so this will be actually a one dimensional matrix. And uh, then also we want one for the velocity, so I will just call it velocity. Okay, and then we need a JIT gem in which we want to write our code. Let's give it also a title. Let's give it a title, we we'll call it uh, Poids uh, Algo. Uh, let's give it also precision float 32, so we are sure that it works on float 32 precision. Maybe this is not so important, but it's kind of cool to have it. And uh, all right, then what else? Uh, what else we need is probably an original initial position, uh, original random position. So let's create a JIT noise. Uh, three floor thirty two seven hundred one, which we want to fire at uh, startup. So when we first open the patch. 
And uh, let's see, then we also want, uh, uh, probably we want to, we want to put this noise in, ah, uh, yeah, we, uh, yeah, we probably want to make it, uh, we probably want to make it in the range minus two to one, so our first, when we first give it a random position, they will just be on the wall, on the wall screen and not only on the positive axis so we can do something like this we multiply the range the range of the noise by two subtract one so we are now into minus one one range uh okay let's give it a title just to remember what it does signer cool uh all right then we want to probably send out a metro a bang from the um, from the JIT world. Let's also create a JIT FPS GUI just to check our frame rate. All right, by default is 60. Uh, let's actually make it uh, 120. 120, okay. And uh, we probably want also to give it uh, a mass to these particles. Uh, see, so this will be also a noise, 1, 32, we need only one single uh, number, one single plane, because the mass is only a scalar, and then like that, and this will also will fire only at the beginning, and let's go inside Jitgen here, let's create another input, so input 1, input 2, input 3, then output 1, output 2, so we have inside a G gen here. And uh, yeah, this will be this will be our location position actually. Let me make this a bit bigger. This will be our velocity and this will be our mass. So the mass of our points, the velocity in the location, and this will be our position out. And this will be our velocity out. The mass, uh, of course, we don't need to send out again because we just use it. We just read it. We don't write it. Okay, so, um, good. Now let's connect these guys. So this will be our mat uh, velocity matrix. This will be our mass. And uh, let's receive here the metro, and we want to bang, probably we want to bang first the velocity, then the position, so this looks right. Uh, let's connect the velocity output to velocity, and let's now create a ggl mesh, ggl dash mesh, knock, draw mode points, point size, something like 3 color let's say white that should be it we will represent these voids as uh, as dots in the beginning so if we do something like this okay so we have a series of uh, uh, here we have a series of voids of dots basically placed in a 3d space Okay, nothing crazy. Oh, let me actually give to the GGL camera the attribute tripod, or the white, we will get seasick. Alright. So the camera will be always horizontal. Uh, cool, so let's go inside Jitgen and create uh, um, a code box, because we will create all this code inside a code box. So, um, pretty cool. Um, so let's do something like this, in one, this is a bit small, isn't it? So let's say something like this, in one, no, sorry, um, position equal in one, velocity equal in two, and mass equal in three. So we are uh, creating three variables inside our code here that we associate with the input matrices. All right, and then yeah, our position out and velocity out. So let's say out. Let's say out one equal. Oops, out one 
equal position out to equal velocity all right so we can connect this here and we can connect this there okay so now we can actually now we can actually start so if i do this yeah okay so now we can actually start reading uh, checking the the code here on the book and translating it into max so very well let's see complex system uh, the first thing that we will want to do into complex system is to create uh, a kind of an emergent behavior so these these birds these boys they will have to interact with each other uh, following some rules in order to create uh, a behavior that we could not actually foresee. So this is what uh, is uh, kind of called an emergent behavior. Uh, okay, so non-linearity, uh, of course, blah, blah, blah. So there is something that say if you change it uh, even a little, then it goes, the system goes crazy and blah, blah, blah. Competition and cooperation, feedback, and so on. So group behaviors, or let's not run into each other. Okay, this is what we are interested in. And as you can see, it did uh, in the beginning. It creates like uh, an array list of vehicles, or which are later called bytes, which actually means. Uh, uh, it's basically what we did when we created the matrix. So we created a matrix. This is basically like an array of uh, bytes because every position gets represented by GGL mesh as a dot. Okay, so it gives it a random uh, position, and then they have an update and display, which this this we will not do into our code because uh, um, this will, uh, we we will not create an update and display function. We will just do all. Uh, all in one in the single code box without creating too many functions. So, uh, seek mouse x mouse y, you know, this we will not implement, and then they do separate, uh, but they actually cannot just separate uh, from uh, nothing, they need to separate from the other vehicles. So, we need to pass also a list of vehicles uh, into the single vehicle. So, basically. Every single cell of the matrix needs to check all the other cells of the matrix uh, to see what is the position and the velocity of the other of the other um, bytes and uh, separate from them or get attracted to them. So we need basically to check all the other cell of the matrix. Okay, so in order to do that, we can create a for loop. So let's create a for loop. And let's say for e equal to zero, e less than dim dot x, because this will be our 700 here, the, the x component of the dimension, so 700, uh, e plus equal to one. We cannot just write e plus plus, this doesn't work in general. We have to write e plus equal to one. Let's create some square brackets and uh, okay. So let's see, other position, it's equal to, and now we can use the nearest pix sampler to get uh, the other cells of the matrix. So uh, we will do like this. So nearest pix in one, this is the matrix that we want to read. And we want to use a vec uh, uh, i and 0 to read it. Because we want to read all the cells of the matrix horizontally. And only the first cell uh, vertically because the matrix has only one dimension. Uh, this is why we put a zero here because so we only read the first cell of the of the matrix. We could have just done just a just a matrix without a second dimension, so just writing seven hundred here. But somehow I kind of remember this was not. Uh, this was not working, there was kind of a bug with that, so uh, this is why I added the second dimension with a 1, but the, the result is the same, we just read uh, we just read the matrix using uh, nearest peaks, which gives us a, uh, gives us this exact cell without uh, making any interpolation between cells, it just gives us the exact cell using, um, uh, using cell coordinates, so using uh, integer numbers instead of normalized coordinates between 0 and 1, right? So then let's get the other velocity. This will be, uh, yeah. So this will be nearest peaks into in this case, because into is our velocity, same vector. 
we used to read it. All right, all right. So after that, let's see how the separate algorithm works. Blah blah blah. Uh, separate, sure. So, um, yeah. Basically, in uh, in processing, it this is processing code. Sorry, maybe I mentioned uh, I forgot to mention, but this is actually processing code. So it's kind of a Java programming language. Uh, in processing, it does like two for loops. First, it does a for loop to iterate through all the vehicles, which are the bytes. And then it makes separate, and inside separate there is another for loop. Uh, the thing is that we don't need to make two for loops, because the gen code, the gen code is already a for loop, because it goes through all the cells of the matrix. So this is the difference between, uh, this is the main difference, I think, between uh, uh, processing and max, is that gen is already the main for loop. And we just need to make another for loop inside this to check all the other, all the other particles. Uh, all the other cell of the matrices. Okay, here it explains a bit how the desired velocity works. So the desired velocity is where our uh, boys wants to go, and we will steer to that velocity. Um, so using the desired velocity minus our current, the current velocity of the particle. This is all explained here in the book. So in this part, the book is explaining that uh, the way, the direction in which the the, the boys will want to go, so to go away from uh, from the other guys, is basically getting the um, the position of them, and then making kind of an average of the direction in which he wants to escape to be as far as possible from uh, from the other that are close. Um, I think that's how it is. So um, so okay, let's see how it works in the code. Inside this function, we are going to loop through all the other vehicles and see if any are too close. Okay, so we have to check if the other vehicles are too close to the current vehicle. And remember, the current vehicle is identified by its position, which is this position here, the position inside the cell, and its velocity is this one here. All the other guys are represented by other position and other velocity. So, <coughs> for all the other guys, we have to first get a distance between uh, this vehicle and the other vehicle, so this boys and the other boys. So uh, let's create let's create this variable d, which is distance, and uh, it uses p vector dist, which is actually just the length, just the length of the vector uh, given by uh, our location. Sorry, our position minus other position. So if we take the length of the the this the difference between these two positions it's basically like using the p vector dist function of processing because we are getting the length of the vector between these two uh, particles so we have to say if the distance is greater than 0 which means uh, it's not the same particle because if the part if the, if the distance is 0 it means that we are actually checking with this particle here with this void here but if the distance is greater than zero, then it means it's not the same particle. Because in this uh, in this uh, loop, uh, using i, we are also taking into account this um, this cell here, because we're going through all the cells, which means also this one, uh, in which the g chain is working currently. But uh, with using this d greater than zero, we actually filter that out. So if d is greater than zero, and uh, d is less than the desired separation. Now, desired separation is just uh, it's just a variable that we have to define ourselves. It's just a number. Then do something. So let's actually create this. Uh, let's actually create this variable, desired separation. And in gen, the parameter must be declared on the, at the top of the code. So let's write desired separation here, and let's give it a number. Uh, let me see, I wrote it there, okay, so let's give it a number 0 0.06 uh, for example, so if they are closer than 0 0.06, oh, let's say, maybe say 0 0.1, if they are closer than 0 0.1, then uh, separate, and blah blah blah, so we need to write now the code for the separation, okay, so let's see. Once we know that two vehicles are too close, we need to make the vector that points away from the offending vehicle. Okay, so we need a vector that goes from the 
other vector to our vector. So let's create it. So from the other particle to our particle, we need this vector. So it does by subtracting the two location, other location. So we just have to do it like this location minus other uh, location, which is actually other position for us. All right. So we get a vector now that goes from the other particle to our particle, simply because this is how vector works. And then let's normalize this vector. So diff equal to normalize diff. And uh, okay, so that's it for the moment. We normalize it, and now we need to. Um, this is not enough. We have the pattern now, but we need to make sure we calculate the average of all vectors pointing one way from closed vehicles. Because you remember, we had to check that it takes into account all the all the vehicles that are actually close to the to the vehicle we are inspecting at the moment, and then make kind of an average uh, vector pointing away. <coughs> so, how do we compute the average? We add up all the vectors and divide by the total, which makes kind of sense. Uh, so let's create a variable. So let's create a variable actually outside of our. Where is my mouse? Oh. So let's create a variable actually outside of our for loop. Let's call it uh, sum separate. So sum sep. And let's create this will be a vector, an empty vector, three dimensional empty vector. And then let's say, because, yeah, it just calls it sum because uh, the way it executes the code then is, a, is quite inefficient, it does three for loops, we will only do everything in the same for loop, so we need different names for the variables, this is why I'm calling it sum sep. And then we need the count to count um, how many voids were actually close to our uh, investigated void, so count sep equal to zero, and then we need to do something like that. We need to sum sep add diff, so sum sep plus equal to diff. And uh, alright, and then we just need to do uh, count sep uh, plus equal 1. Because we are adding, uh, we found a new void that is, was closer to our, and then we have to add 1 to this count. Okay, this sounds cool. Now, outside of the for loop, we can do something like this if count sep was greater than zero, so is greater than zero, uh, then sum sep dv divided equal to uh, count sep. So we divide sum sep for how many of these uh, guys uh, we found. Once we have the average vector, that p vector can be scaled to a maximum speed and become our desired velocity. We desire to move in that direction at maximum speed. And once we have the desired velocity, it's the same old Reynolds story. Steering equals desired minus velocity. Or oh, Reynolds is the one that invented these, uh, these flocking algorithms and void stuff. So, <coughs> let's create a variable called maximum speed. This will also be a parameter. So, max speed. Let's assign it to a value of 0 0.02. And this is, this is just values that I found empirically. So, these are not written in the book because the book... Uh, uses pixels as a unity of uh, count, we use uh, world coordinates. So basically these numbers I found them empirically. So just have to, you can just experiment with your own numbers. So max speed will be 0 0.02. So uh, now what it does is basically set mag max speed, we'll set the magnitude of the vector to max speed. We don't have this in gen, so we actually have to do something like this, sum set equal to uh, normalize sum set, and then we can basically sum set uh, multiplied equal to max speed. This is basically the same as doing a, a set magnitude to the maximum speed. We first normalize and then we multiply, that's the same. And then uh, p vector steer, so let's create a steer, let's actually call it uh, steer set equal to uh, the subtraction of sum sep minus our current velocity. So sum sep minus velocity is our current velocity. And we have to limit 
we have to limit this back to, to our maximum force. Now maximum force, let's create another parameter. Max force, I also made it equal to 0 0.02. This is also another experimental number that I came up with. And uh, this we have to set to, uh, yeah, then where, where are we? Still limit max force. Okay, limit doesn't exist inside gen, so we have to do something like this. Steer step equal to clip. Steer step minus max force. So we want to clip it in between minus max force and max force because uh, because um, this can also be a negative force, but uh, the magnitude must never be greater than 0 0.02. Uh, right, I think this is it. And then we have to apply force steer. Now apply force, uh, apply force is actually just dividing, is a, is a function that um, Daniel Schiffman uh, creates early in the book uh, and it's basically just, uh, just like this. So steer, no, so basically means position. Uh, how was it? Ah, no, acceleration. We need the acceleration also. So let's create a new variable here. Acceleration. This will be an empty vector in the beginning. And then we're going to fill it with these forces. So acceleration plus equal to steer sep uh, divided by mass. Now, if we just divide by mass as it is now, so this is what apply force does, just divides the force by the mass and uh, sums it to acceleration. Now if we just divide by the mass, we are actually multiplying because uh, we are actually making the force greater because mass is just between uh, 0 and 1. So we can actually do like this in 3 uh, dot x multiplied by 4 and uh, oh you know what, actually not, let's Let's add it. Let's add 4 to that. So the, the mass will go now. So mass goes uh, from uh, 4 to 5. So this is, this is anyway just a number that I found to be working with these other numbers. Uh, this, can also, this can also be changed, of course. You can just experiment with the numbers. But the thing is that now the mass goes from 4 to 5. Uh, which means we are dividing the force by a factor of 4, uh, up to a factor of 5. So, this maybe doesn't make much sense. We should actually just make this bigger and this smaller. But for the moment, let's just leave it like this, because I know these numbers work. Uh, okay, so we now have the... Um, we now have the acceleration for the separation. And this should actually work. So what we want to do now is to do velocity plus equal the acceleration and position plus equal velocity. Now what we will do in processing is also multiply the acceleration by zero because in processing this will be retained from frame to frame but in gen actually every frame is like a new uh, is like a new canvas so we actually uh, don't need to multiply by zero. Now I get an error here. What is your problem? Uh, let's see what is this problem. Variable location is not defined. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's actually not called location as we saw. Uh, this is called position. I called it position. So. So position minus other position. And uh, this should work. So. so now they should separate. Let's see what these guys uh, do. So if I click here. Oh, you can see that they actually uh, separate from each other. Uh, now this is, in three, this is in three dimensions. So it's a bit unclear. Let's actually move it to, to two dimensions by just doing something like this with the, uh, nah, you know, we can just do something like that, position dot x, y, and now we are in two dimensions. So let's see these guys that are separating from each other, ah, uh, now when they go outside of the border they are just gone, so let's actually restrict the, 
the world using a wrap by between minus one and one for the uh, for both axes. So yeah, that's how it goes. Uh, you can see that they uh, are separating from each other. So pretty cool. Uh, it's basically working. They are trying to go as far as possible from each other as they can. Let's just make the separation distance a bit smaller. So zero six. And now it looks nice because they are actually trying to to be as far as possible as they can, one from the other. And let's maybe make also the let's make them bigger, make five. And they are squares because we want to use anti-alias to make them uh, circles, right? Um, okay, so this was the first part of the algorithm. And I think I will stop here with the video and uh, I'll continue the algorithm in the next, uh, in some next videos. So the next parts of the algorithm will be to um, uh, make them attract to each other, so seek. Uh, basically, they, they, they steer toward each other, so they try to attract to each other at the same time, they, they separate from each other. Uh, no, sorry, they, they go toward the center of, uh, of uh, mass of the group, let's say. At the same time, they don't want to be too close to each other, and they also want to uh, go in the direction where the neighbors go. So this is pretty cool, and we are going to see this in the next uh, couple of videos, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, you know, if you want to have these in three dimensions, in 3D, well, then we just have to, uh, we just have to delete this X, Y here. Load bang. Now this is in three dimensions. So they will not get close to each other until, uh, but when we are in three dimensions, uh, it's, uh, it's important to make this distance bigger because in three dimensions, the, yeah, exactly that, that's, that's how it will work. In three dimensions, the distance, uh, uh, will be bigger number because the com the vector has three components and not anymore two. So this number needs to be also bigger, uh, maybe 0.3. Cool. Uh, as an exercise, I could tell you to create a parameter for which we can switch between uh, two dimensions and three dimensions uh, without toggle or something. This would be really cool if you can manage to create such a parameter. Cool, so I will stop here with this video. And uh, you can download the patch for free on my Patreon. If you want to join my supporters on Patreon, it's like uh, 150 people, it's a lot of people. Uh, by the way, thank you guys, this has been uh, incredible support for me and basically is what pushes me to create those videos. So if you feel like, support me on Patreon, get a lot of patches uh, which are not for free but only for Patreon supporters and enjoy uh, life especially. So. Thank you, see you in the next video, hope this was useful, ciao.